It's been a while since I talked about stock photography and I figured it would be good to do an end of the year wrap up. 2023 was the year that AI took over and it certainly made an appearance in the stock photography game. Everyone's getting into it from Shutterstock pairing up with OpenAI and Adobe releasing their very own Firefly, which is great by the way. Getty was strongly opposed to AI images and then teamed up with NVIDIA so that they could make their own. And Wirestock basically flipped their whole business around. They went from being a multi-agency distributor to focusing on distributing AI-based content. Personally, I don't know what to think about the whole AI trend in general, let alone for stock photography. I've submitted numerous commercial images to these agencies and they've been made available for training the AI. I've made money off of this. I'm not sure what to think about that. It's basically like they're buying your photo to reuse it and reproduce it in different ways. And I'm all right with that, to be honest, because I submitted those to be used commercially and the stock photography agencies are using them commercially. They're just kind of repurposing them. If I personally was to download images from these sites, make composites out of them and then re-upload, I would be in violation of the terms of service for these sites. If it's called AI, it's all right. It's all good. I come from a hip hop background and I appreciate sampling and the art of collage and everything like that. And essentially that's what AI is doing. It's just kind of doing it a little bit more automated. I'm interested to see what the future holds for this technology, to be honest. I think that we're going to have some tools available to us that allow for creation of things that otherwise wouldn't be possible. And we're already starting to see some of that. So it's pretty cool if you ask me. One of my biggest priorities for stock photography these days is minimizing the time I spend editing and keywording these assets. I want to do these tasks in bulk. So I'm going to go to a landmark such as the St. Louis Arch and I'm going to take a bunch of pictures and videos and I'm going to be able to use the same description, title and keyword for all of those images. I'm also trying my best to do everything in camera. So I'm trying to get that exposure and everything just right. So I don't have to do any editing to these files. I'm just shooting in raw plus JPEG. The raw is basically just in case. And for videos, I'm shooting in MOV format in a standard profile and just uploading straight, straight away, no editing or anything like that. It saves a ton of time. It's the only way to really make stock photography worth it to me. This is a genre that allows you to try new things. It's not about niching down, but rather providing a little bit of everything. You might find that a certain type of photography or videography sells better for you and then try to specialize that on a professional level. So for me, I'm doing a lot of events these days and I wouldn't have found that without the stock photography. I was taking these images and uploading them in bulk and then I started to get some gigs off of that and I'm making a lot more money off of those gigs than I do off of Shutterstock sales, for example. I've got my camera with me wherever I go anyways, even if it's just my iPhone, most of the time I have a mirrorless camera on me. And so I'm documenting the world. I might as well share this with others. This could be as simple as documenting a landmark or something a little bit more specific, like when I did the one chip challenge and still had the box left. Having that box allowed me to sell the images when it became news. I probably should have uploaded them ahead of time because I suspected it was going to become news anyways. Most of what I'm uploading these days is editorial. It's things from public places and just basically my travels. I'm not necessarily interested in doing commercial shoots for stock photography. Titles, descriptions, and keywords for editorial images are pretty easy. Usually I'll just go to the Wikipedia page for the place or thing that I'm describing and I'll be able to get a lot of really useful information from there. It's a lot of fun when you travel to places and you find out that there's not very many stock photos and videos of them. For example, I went to Pontiac, Illinois with my wife. It was a pretty random stop. We just heard about it. They had a Route 66 museum and we thought we'd go check it out. It turns out this place is kind of stuck in time and they have a lot of really neat murals and just a lot of really cool things to photograph and there's a lot of history in that town. I had a great time, she had a great time, and I've sold a ton of those photos and videos already. It's a lot of fun to be able to share that with the world. 
Being a photographer certainly helps me see the world in a different light, literally. One last thing that stock photography offers you and why I'm doing it going into 2024 is the fact that you're building a diverse portfolio. Not only is it diverse, but it's also curated. I might not do the best job of picking out my favorite photos. Maybe they're all my favorite. Maybe none of them are my favorite. This way somebody objective is looking at the photos, deciding what gets to make the profile and what doesn't. That's pretty valuable, especially when you're doing photography for a different genre than you normally would. I can send my Shutterstock portfolio to anyone and they'll say, hey, this guy's pretty diverse. Versus if I show them a bunch of portraits or something like that and I'm going to be doing sports or something to that effect. You probably don't want it to be your main portfolio, but it's nice to have and it's nice to be able to just send somebody that link when they're asking questions like, yes, I do love photography and I do take pictures of pretty much everything and you can check it out right here. What are your thoughts on stock photography? Are you still doing it? Do you think it's worth it? Has AI taken over? Please comment down below. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Till the next time.